Hello everyone. Happy Friday. For those of you who look for Friday to be the end of your week, for us entrepreneurs and in 24-7 service, it's another wonderful day in the neighborhood. As you can see, a quite wonderful day in the neighborhood. Wanted to talk to you about America's political year this year. Not the politics of it. The enterprises of how it works against us and how we're pointing fingers at each other and breaking out in fights and warring at each other for a point of view. That's what politics is, point of view. I have a point of view. Clinton has a point of view. Trump has a point of view. Uh, Jill Stein has a point of view. And when they speak of their point of view, we all speak of our point of views. Even us in our own businesses have a point of view. Now, I've been an active participant in the electoral process since the Nixon-McGovern uh, election year back in 1972. That was the first time I was eligible to vote. And I voted every single time since. I've never missed a voting opportunity locally or otherwise, because I believe that if I want my voice to be heard, then I want my vote to be heard as well. And people like that, these folks coming by right now from the pool, they, I bet they want their voice to be heard too. Right now we're making decisions based on those little kids' future that just walked by here. My children, your children, our children's children, our children's children's children. It's all about integrity. It's all about starting here. What went wrong with politics is when it became political. It's always been political since the very beginning. I did an analysis in high school. <clears throat> it was a consolidation between English and history class. We, both classes were studying the same thing in our program. And we found in those days, that was back uh, then in the late 60s, that the majority of the persons elected president of the United States did so by their popularity more so than their parties platform. The person running for president was so popular with what they, their point of view at the time, he drew in the votes and they were elected. Many of you foreigners who have become citizens know that this process doesn't end uh, in November. There's one more fail-safe for the government that nobody's talking about, the Electoral College. Elected officials in Washington, D.C. have the final say on who's to be president. Yeah, so a Jill Stein from an outside the mainstream political program. Bernie Sanders say he goes uh, independent and runs and wins. He may not be elected in the electoral process because he must also have the electoral votes to finalize the deal. Here's why. Our founding fathers were very smart people. They really thought about this because in those days, the rich could buy the votes of all the people around them. So there was little integrity in the voting process possible. And there was a lot of that. Coercion. People getting beat up on the street in line before they walked in to, to vote. And they better have voted the right way. Or their children could disappear. Those kinds of things. Yes, that's the American democracy that nobody speaks about. So now... The founding fathers decided, hey, you know, let's let's 
let's make sure that whoever gets elected with the most popular votes is really somebody that, that didn't buy the votes and came in to subverse and overthrow our government and create an, a monarchy and, and those types of things. Give us back to England. They were afraid of that. We should be afraid of it today because it still exists. However, in today's process, I assure you, it has not changed in 240 years. It has not. It's gotten bigger, more modern. It's easier for us to see it in social media, but it hasn't changed. The people in Washington, D.C. have the final say in who becomes president. They approve it through the Electoral College who the person was that gained the most votes in the general election. So it's not over. But I urge you to stop pointing fingers at each other for your point of view. This is America. We have our democracy. We have the right to speak up and speak out, speak our mind. We do not have the right to attack each other. We do not have the right to send goons to beat up people so that they'll say the right thing in front of a microphone. We don't have that right. You don't have that right. Keep your point of view. Be proud of your point of view. Be proud of the fact that you live somewhere where you can speak your point of view out loud. Enjoy your weekend, my friends. I know I will. Until Monday.